Hello everybody, in this Rhino Grasshopper video demo, I would like to talk a little bit about the graph mapper. Okay, let's start. Let's begin by creating a row of points using firstly a series component and then connecting it to a construct point component. And I will start by creating the points along the x axis. Okay. So I'm going to connect this to the x coordinate. And you can see that I have a row of points. And let's control the number of points being generated by changing the value of the count. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the graph mapper to control the z coordinate <coughs> corresponding to each of the points. And to do that, let's input the graph mapper node onto the canvas. You can get the graph mapper nodes by going to params input graph mapper. Okay. By default, it gives you a blank canvas. And the next thing I need to do is to create a list of numbers ranging from 0 to 1 that correspond to the number of items that's generated by this uh, series component. Before I do that, let's connect a panel over here so that we can see the result. Okay, so you can see over here that um, 14 items has been generated ranging the index from 0 to 13. Okay, so I need to create the same number of items using the range component. Okay, by default, if you do not input any um, changes to the domain socket, the this item generated will range from 0 to 1. Okay, let me just put a panel so that you can see the result. Pressing the Alt key, connect this here, and you can see that um, I got a range of items over here. As mentioned, I want to create a list of items that is uh, having the same number as that of the generated by the series. Okay, so you can see um, they are not corresponding to one another in terms of the number of items. So let's, let me just connect this to the, to the step. And you notice that the range created an additional item, okay, corresponding to index 14. Whereas in the case of the panel is uh, having the index stopping at 13. So how do we make sure that we can get the same number of items? Actually, it's quite easy. What I can do is we can put a subtraction node over here. And then you put a value of my, uh, minus one so that I can subtract off this value by one. Okay, so I go to the max and go to the subtraction. Okay, and plug this here. And here I just want to put a one. Okay, let's just put a panel. And then let me just drag this over here. You can see better. And then give it a value of 1. Remember not to press enter. Otherwise, you will generate a wrong uh, result. Okay, so I'm going to plug this here. And then this result is going to plug to the step. And you can see now that the series and the range generate the same number of items. Okay, you can see if I have to change this. See, it's generate the same number of items. Okay. So the reason for generating the same number of items because I need the numbers to match up okay for uh, one for generating the value on the x axis and the other one the value on the on the uh, z axis okay so now what I'm going to do is uh, let's connect this value that has been generated by the range. You notice a range generating a value from ranging from 0 to 1. Let's connect it to the graph mapper. And then by doing a right mouse click over the graph mapper, you can select the graph types that are available. Okay, there are various graph types. 
In this case here, let's just use the Gaussian as it best illustrate uh, the, the purpose in my opinion. Okay. So here lies the confusing part. Okay, how do we interpret this uh, graph uh, mapper? Okay, what I'm going to do is let's put a panel over here so that we can see the output result. Okay, so I'm going to put a panel and plug this here and let's analyze the result. Okay, I'm going to double click here so we can see the, the thing better. Okay, you can see that when I double click to open up the graph editor, we can make further changes to the canvas by, for example, changing the, the range of the x axis as well as that of the y axis. Okay, you can change this uh, to something of your uh, desired intention. But I'm going to leave this as that because this already corresponds to the list of numbers that was created by the range which is uh, from 0 to 1. You can see, yeah, it's ranging from 0 to 1. Okay, this is the important part that we need to understand is that the graph mapper takes in the input as the x value and then output it as the y value. This is very confusing because when we look at this canvas with the way that the socket is being connected, we will naturally think that because the socket is connected in this direction, we will think that the the input is coming from this direction, hitting on the graph and coming down to give us the result, which is not true. What is actually happening is that the input is actually coming from the x-axis over here. And when it hits the graph, it will reflect the new value onto the y-axis over here. Okay, we, we, we can we can verify that by looking at the input and the output result. Okay, so let's look at let's say um, index seven as the input, which corresponds to zero point five by three on the y axis, which is somewhere here. Say let's measure one, two, three, four, five. So somewhere here. Okay, zero point five three is somewhere here. If we were to move our cursor up you notice that it will hit somewhere here. And if we were to uh, reflect it onto the y-axis, it will be somewhere here, which is around um, 0 0.7 something value. Okay, so look, let's look at uh, index 7 on the result. Okay, so index 7 is this, 0 0.53. Let's look at index 7. Yeah, you can see 0 0.7 or 0 0.74 to be more precise okay so you can see that yeah what is happening is actually the input is the x-axis and the output is the y-axis okay so this is the confusing part that we need to understand okay so I'm gonna click OK and now um, Let's connect this over to the Z coordinate. You can see that we are able to manipulate the the Z coordinate of the points by using a graph mapper. So if I have to move this, you are able to control it. Okay. The problem that we have now is that the range of the point modification in the z directions is only able to have a maximum of a value one so if you want to increase the value what we can do is to put a multiplication um not over here okay you can use this multiplication to increase the height Okay, we can connect this here and we can connect this here and then let's put a sorry let's put a slider here let's say something like that okay and yeah we can control you can see now we can control the 
the height by using the multiplication. So with that, I come to the end of um, this demo. Hope that it has been clear enough for the explanation of the essential uh, function of the graph mapper. Okay, see you. Bye.